Dr. Sage here. Today's lecture, we begin discussing viruses and prion. In particular, we're gonna talk about the position of viruses in the biological spectrum. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what it means when viruses are described as filterable, identify better terms for viruses than alive or dead, and list characteristics of viruses that distinguish them from cellular life. Pasteur developed a vaccine for rabies and coined the term virus, which is Latin for poison. Ivanovsky and Bajernik discovered that tobacco disease is caused by a virus, and Lofer and Froch discovered that foot and mouth disease is also caused by a virus. In this image, we can see the results of tobacco disease, which is caused by a virus, which you can see in this electron microscope image. Viruses were first described as being filterable viruses. So what exactly does that mean? Well, infectious fluids were passed through porcelain filters designed to trap bacteria. The cell-free filtered fluid remained infectious. This proved that an agent smaller than the bacteria was the cause of the disease. In other words, viruses are able to pass through filters that would stop or catch bacteria, thus demonstrating that disease can be caused by something smaller than the bacteria. Viruses can infect every type of cell, bacteria, algae, fungi, protozoa, plants, and animals. As we go through this series of video lectures, we're gonna get into the nature of viruses. Are they organisms? Are they alive? What role do viruses play in the evolution of life? What are their distinctive characteristics? How can a particle so small, simple, and seemingly insignificant be capable of causing disease and death? What is the connection between viruses and cancer? And what role do viruses play in the development of all other organisms? In today's video, we're gonna discuss the unique properties of viruses. So viruses are called infectious particles. They're not called organisms. They're not made out of cells like bacteria or your cells. So we don't call them living organisms. Instead, we call them infectious particles. Similarly, instead of calling them alive or dead, we call them active or inactive. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. They cannot multiply unless they invade a specific host cell. They must instruct the genetic and metabolic machinery of the host cell to make and release new viruses. So viruses are not cells. They are obligate intercellular parasites of bacteria, protozoa, fungi, algae, plants, and animals. They do not independently fulfill the characteristics of life, hence why we typically don't call them living. So viruses are inactive macromolecules outside the host cell and active only inside host cells. They have the basic structure of a protein shell called a capsid surrounding the nucleic acid core. They are ubiquitous in nature and have had major impact on development of biological life. All are ultra microscopic in size, ranging from 20 nanometers to 100 nanometers in diameter. They can have either DNA or RNA, but not both. They can have double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, single-stranded RNA, or double-stranded RNA. They carry molecules on their surface that determine the specificity for attachment to the host cell. They multiply by taking control of the host cell's genetic material and regulating the synthesis and assembly of new viruses. They lack enzymes for most metabolic processes, and they lack the machinery for synthesizing proteins. All right, this was your first introduction to viruses, where we discuss the position of viruses in the biological spectrum. We will continue discussing viruses through this set of video lectures. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.